Uh, I want to talk about structure binding and the talk starts from uh, the previous meetup in which uh, Dvir raised in the show and tell part the question of can we create a concept for being structure bindable? And the answer is that it is a bit uh, problematic and I want to discuss that and, and uh, Dvir and I had a discussion after the meetup. Um, we talk about C++ uh, um, as a side talk. Uh, so uh, I want to uh, raise some of the ideas that were raised by, uh, to present the ideas that were raised by Dvir and, and in the discussion with me. Um, a few words about myself. I'm uh, teaching at the Academic College of Tel Aviv-Yafo, um, co-organizer of this meetup in the uh, co conference, a dev advocate at Incredibuild. Uh, a few words about Incredibuild. Uh, if you are suffering from so slow builds, talk to me. Um, there is a solution for that. Um, so let's talk about structure bindable. Uh, so first of all, um, C++ 17. C++ 17 um, introduced the possibility of structure binding, which means that you can take um, a structure bindable type and um, unpack it or bind it to several uh, variables. And it can be done for three different types. For tuple-like types, which include tuple, but not only tuple, any, any type which has a get, a member-wise get, uh, which can get the elements uh, by an index. And index, uh, I mean, as a template uh, argument, or uh, a type that specialize the std get for its own type, and it should have the tuple size being specialized and the tuple element. So any type that has these three, which includes, by the way, uh, standard library types like std array and uh, std pair, and then c style arrays. Literal, and literal arrays, yeah. Yeah, and, and then c style arrays uh, are also uh, part of the structure bindable types, and any struct with all public fields. So uh, let's take a few examples just you know, to make sure that we see who is structure bindable. So tuple is, uh, and you can unpack it or, or bind it by ref, or you can bind it by value. I would not go through each line of code, but if I um, bind it by ref, then if I change it, I am actually changing the original tuple. If I bind it by value, then I, if I'm changing, I'm changing a value and not the original tuple. Same goes with pair. And most probably you can see that same would go with a uh, std array, uh, but here, of course, the types should be the same. Um, same would go also for our type. So I would not go through the code, uh, but we can create our own type, uh, which is structure, structure bindable. If we provide a specialized version for std get, or we provide a member wise get, it behaves as get. I mean, that gets the, um, index uh, as a template argument, uh, the special version of uh, tuple size and the special version of tuple element. Uh, the next um, example, the next uh, type that is structural bindable is C-style array. In this example, by the way, there is something nice. You can even uh, bind the multidimensional array. So in this case, if I bind into A1, I actually get into A1, uh, the one and two as array by ref. So if I change index zero, I actually change the one here in the internal array sitting inside LR. And if I take it by value, I actually copy an internal array into A2 or B2 or C2. So uh, this is you know, the, the basics, the, what is structure binding? Uh, if we have a struct, then if all fields are public, then again, we can bind by ref or by value. So these are all the three um, different cases. And the question is then, can we have a concept? Let's take it, uh, let's uh, call it, for example, a tuple um, for having two types inside a type that we can unpack, that we can bind into two variables. So if we are getting something which is a tuple, I just call it a tuple instead of structure bindable for two variables. So uh, it means that we can unstruct it, um, we can bind it to A and B. So the question is, can we create a concept 
that says, okay, I know, or I can check, I can require you um, to be structure bindable for two. So let's take the challenge. Now, Dvir took the challenge and Dvir started with, okay, maybe we can do that. Maybe we can ask inside the concept that we require T to be bindable into A and B, which looks nice. If this works, well, we're done and we can just call it a day, but it doesn't. And it doesn't work because this is not an expression, uh, a primary expression that can, can be used inside a uh, constraint. So uh, let's take a look. Let's, let's you know, just open the code. Um, this is the example. This is what we are trying. And both uh, GCC and Clang would give us uh, an arrow on uh, what is this out of here? You should create, um, this is not an expression, this is a statement. You're creating a variable? No, you cannot do that inside the concept. Okay, so back to the drawing board. Uh, so no, this one is not okay. We should check for something else. Okay, so uh, I think the next attempt is based on a suggestion, a proposal by uh, Heskel, who is here, I think, today with us. Uh, we just raised in a WhatsApp group. Um, so maybe you can put the binding into um, a lambda. Now I, I dropped into the lambda also a const eval, which is not necessary, but just to say, you know what? I want to tell the compiler that this lambda can be evaluated at compile time. And, um, and, and now this lambda sits inside an expression, so I'm creating an actual expression out of it. And uh, not so nice uh, result is that, first of all, GCC and Clang do not behave the same. Uh, Clang doesn't take it. And GCC is happy with us in a way. We are still not good. And I would show you why, um, even if we say, okay, we are fine with a single compiler, we don't need all of them. But no, this is still not a, um, a solution. Why? Um, let's take a look at the few things. Um, by the way, we can remove the constant value. It's not important. Um, GCC would take it as that. And Clang would still not like us. If we take the constant value, we can take the parents as well. Um, so we are back to a very simple Lambda. And I, I would start with something in the Lambda. I had to create T explicitly. Now, usually uh, inside, uh, um, uh, oh, why do I have here parents? I think are redundant. Yeah, okay, anyhow, um, usually after requires, after requires you have, um, you have parents. And then in the parents, you have something about, you want to tell something about T, and then you're using T here. Uh, but you cannot use T here because it was not captured. So you say, okay, maybe I can capture it. But um, no, you cannot capture it. Uh, GCC is also not so um, happy with you. And no, uh, there is a problem here. I will not go through the issue here, but I would say, okay, no problem. I would not capture it but T is a known type, so I can create what T is, and then it's not something that they want to run. I just, it's an unevaluated, I want it to be in an unevaluated um, scope, context. So I, I mean, I just want uh, the requires close, the constraint to check whether this is possible. So uh, can, another, you, can you do a decal type? Yes, another option is to say, maybe we can better do a uh, declare value. So maybe better to say, we want a declare val of t, right? Uh, this is better. But then the problem is that we fall with decal val both in GCC and Clang because they say, you know what? Um, you are using the declare val in um, evaluated context. You actually need to create this one in order to do this one. It's not an evaluated context in which you know you just create something in order to create the declare just the type. I'm not taking the declare type, I'm doing something on this side in order to get the result. And, and, and the result, I, I need to unpack it. So both are not uh, so happy with me, with a static assert, with a protector on the declare value. So back to creating T, which is not a good thing because maybe T doesn't have 
an empty constructor. Okay, but we have even more problems. The next problem is that it actually doesn't work. Let's see that. Well, we have two foo functions here. The first one is taking a, tap, a tuple, our tuple, okay? And then we print that we are in the tuple case. The second one is the generic case, taking anything. Now, of course, if we send two, we expect you to go to the first one. And hooray, hooray, yeah, you go to the first one. That's good. But then the question is, if I send you, uh, let's say a three or a one, which are both uh, structure bindable, but with uh, but not for two, right? Uh, I asked here to be structure bindable for two because this is what I want to do in the function. I want to use two internal variables that are in the tuple. So if I check this one, I would expect you to go to this function, to the foo, the generic case that doesn't take a tuple, but takes something else. But if I take it out of the comment, I just get a better compilation error. No, so it's, an, it's not a finiable context, which means that, well, if you're a tuple, okay, we're fine with you. But if you are not, it means that it's not that the concept is not met. It means that you have compilation error inside your concept, which is not okay. your, what you want, because Good this question. is not in a finiable context. Two questions in the chat. So uh, I do not have time to questions, which means that I would try oh. to catch questions at the end. Sorry, okay. I would try. Uh, so um, I, I would try to do that. So um, one doesn't work. Also, uh, three doesn't work. Same thing. You don't go to the actual function that you wanted. So this is not a proper concept. And two with um, two with a private constructor and another public constructor because I actually want to create the two, the second two also doesn't work because here again, you are not a tuple. Why? Because you are not structure bindable, but I wanted you to go here and you do not go here. You just give me a compilation error. So it means that you try to use the concept, but then the concept fails. And instead of saying, okay, I do not, um, you know, um, I do not meet this concept. You just gave me computation. Also, it means that this is not a proper solution. Okay, so but let's go I back to question. the drawing board. Adia, I can give you a permission for a question. We'll do it at the end, sorry. Okay, I'm not sure that there is a question. So let's go back to the slides. So we tried, okay. Um, we could create, there is a possibility to create a, a concept except for structures that captures the tuple-like cases and the C-style array cases, which is quite, you know, this is a simple one. Uh, the, the code is here. I would not go through the code, but it would not catch the struct case. And by the way, you cannot catch the struct case in C++20. Why? Because you cannot ask a struct, uh, do you have all uh, fields public? How many fields do you have? No, there isn't any way to do that currently, which means this is what we can have, something that can ask, okay, are you structure bindable um, uh, for tuple-like and for C-style array, but not for structs? Tough luck. But here, Dvir came back a few days later and just sent me a message saying, you know what? I think it could be done based on herb starters is and as pattern matching. And uh, I was there, by the way, I was in, at CPTCon uh, hearing this uh, lecture, great lecture. You can uh, watch it on YouTube uh, and, and great topic, great proposal. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, very tried that and, and sent me something. And then I also was uh, excited. Uh, so let's play a bit with is and as before taking that into our concept. So is and as, let, let's talk a bit about that. So the idea behind is and as pattern matching is that in some cases you want to ask, I got a, a variable X. Now you want to do something with X if it is a string. So I want to um, um, 
if it is a string, I want to convert, I mean, to cast it to a string and then use it as a string. So, so instead of you know, asking, is it a string um, with a static cast or with a, a type ID or something, I would just say, okay, uh, I want yes to be assigned with X, but only if, if it would create a string. And, and then if this is correct, then it means that S is X and I got it as a string because X was a string. And then I get in here and this is being checked at compile time. So, okay, I, I have S and then I can, you know, because it's string, I can access uh, the index zero. But if it is not, I have another uh, case. I, I check, can you please try to structure bind me into two ints? If yes, then I want A and B to be structural bindable, structural uh, unpacked from X into A and B. Now I have here a main, a simple main. Um, by the way, uh, let me ask you, if I'm uh, sending Charles star, what would be printed, the first case? Killian. Yeah I, I, yeah, I guess nothing because it's a C string. That's correct. The first one is nothing. Why? Because I'm not a string. I can be converted to a string, but this is not what I was asking here. I just asked, are you a string? Is X something that can be actual string? So the first one would not go into the first if it would not go into the else, which means it would print nothing. The second one would print W. W. That's correct. And the third one would print one and two. Let's go to the code. Let's play, play with it a bit. Oh, how can I run it? It's a code that depends on something that is not in C++ yet. Well, I'm running it in uh, Compiler Explorer, Compiler Explorer using the C++ Circle compiler. Uh, Sean Baxter was there on stage with Herb Sutter in CppCon 2021. And when Herb Sutter was talking about pattern matching, he, was, he invited Sean Baxter, the inventor, the uh, one who is behind C++ Circle compiler to show how it is uh, working currently already in C++ Circle. So I have the exact same code uh, and you can see that we have W and one T. Now I'm going to change it a bit. Instead of having is here, I would change it to as. Now as means, can I be a string? I mean, can I you know, behave as a string? Now you are not a string, but I can create a string out of a child star. So watch. And oh, we see H down below. Because yeah, uh, hello, it's child star, but child star can be as a string. It's convertible to a string. So yes, we can take it as as. So there is a difference between is and as, and, and the idea behind the entire thing is to have some kind of uh, nice syntax for uh, tying together the casting and the question whether the casting is fine or not, whether we can do that or not. Um, and, then, and then there is additional things like inspect, we would, which we would not discuss here. So uh, Dvir came back and said, you know what? I think we can use this idea of is and as as something that begin you can be used inside um, concept as an expression. So the idea is this thing is an expression. We are not creating a new variable. We just asked, is t can t be as? And this is using another uh, another thing that you can ask. Okay, I don't know how many. So it, it means. Are you structural bindable in a way? That's it. So uh, structural bindable requires a T, let's call it a small T, to be something that can be structural bindable into any number of elements. Whoa, that's nice and easy, but I will tell you what I, I'm missing here yet. I need, for some reason, to get only a tuple to get only something that, that is structural bindable, but I know that it is structural bindable for two. And here I'm getting any structural, structural bindable type, including structs. But even if, it, if you are only a single field or three fields, and eventually I want to use this concept in order to get some thing that I can unpack to A and B, to two variables. So I need to, to add something more 
to that. Let's add something more to that. So the next thing is to check whether something is a single element structure bindable. So I'm creating a struct. Let's call it single element structured bindable wrapper. Okay. And inside this struct, I have uh, using first type, it's a templated struct or over T. Uh, I have a function first that tries to unpack the declared value of T into uh, A and many others. And now, single element structure bindable means that it has at least one, maybe more than one, but at least one. This is what I want here. Okay, you have at least one. I can unpack you into a single variable. Maybe you have more. Okay. Uh, I return A just in order not to have any uh, warning for not using A. And I know that the first type that I hold is the declared type of the return value of the function first. Then I can have a concept called single element structure bindable, which says that I require you to have a T that can be binded to a single element. Now, if, if I want to bind you here, I need to bring the actual type. I can use the three dots, but if I do not use the three dots, it means that, well, uh, for the T as expression, you can put the three dots, but if you actually want to give a type, you need to give a type. Well, I have the type, so this one now is for somebody who is actually single element. Not two, not, this one is, ah, you might be two, but this one, no, no, I, I actually want you to be a single one. Okay, that's nice. What about two? Well, you know, it's like induction. Uh, let's go for two. So, um, two element structure bindable. Now here, again, I have the struct, and the struct is okay with, okay, I have one and may, maybe more, I have two and maybe more, which means that this struct is okay also with three. But I get the actual types for the first and the second. Maybe you have more, but I know that you have at least two and I have the types of the two. Okay, so now I can use it inside a concept. So you are two element structure bindable if you have a T as two element structure bindable first type and two elements structure bindable second type. And now I have a concept for something which is bindable by exactly two. I can call it a tuple. Uh, and if I want to make sure that you would not uh, be or try to be a single element here, then I can say, okay, a tuple is something which is a structure bindable. I don't want you, because if I would use this one, again, I would fall in compilation error in case you are not structure bindable or in case you are a single element structure bindable because you would try to do that and that would fail and it would not fail in a sphena context. It's not a spheniable context. I mean, you would try to do that, it doesn't compile and this is hard error. So instead of getting to this concept by creating the next one saying, oh, you are a tuple. If you are structure bindable, you are not, don't continue, stop here. I don't want a compilation at all. You are not structure bindable. Oh, you are structure bindable? Okay, let's go on. I don't want you to be a single element structure bindable because if you are a single element structure bindable, then when I would check the next one, you would have hard error. I don't want hard error. Oh, you are a single element structure bindable? So I want you to be two elements. Now, the last one is here in order to avoid the three and four and five elements structure bindable. So this one catches something that is structure bindable, but not for one, but for exactly two. And then we do not have any how they all. And we can take a look, we can see it in the code, but we would not. Um, so let's talk a bit more. Maybe we want something a bit more generic. Maybe we want structure bindable with, and to have the number as an additional template argument. I mean, why have a tuple? Why not have, you know, I expect here something which is structure bindable for certain amount of variables. And then I can use it in a very generic way. Now, in order to achieve that, here we can um, rely on yet another proposal for 
C++ 26 probably, because as Inbal mentioned the list, it is not going to be in C++ 23, probably. And this is the generic packing expansions or something that is based on that. And this is the addition size of three dots that would, or maybe if the proposal would be expected, accepted, uh, give us the number of elements in a structure, uh, I mean the public elements, only for aggregate types, or I, I mean only for structure bindable types, and a uh, number of tuple elements, etc. So eventually, this thing is the whole thing. It means you are structure bindable for size, size, if you have a size of with three dots that returns your size. Simple as that. You want to see it working? Let's go for it. Uh, again, circle compiler, uh, circle, comp circle compiler um, also implemented this one. It, it comes from another proposal. Uh, I have to use here build 131 because when I try it with the latest one, it fails. You know, it happens with, with, with uh, things that are under uh, development. Uh, but if I go one back, then it does work. And here, what I have is, I, I only ask you for your size and I can have, uh, is, uh, this is the only thing that I have here. And again, the, thank you, Dvir, Dvir proposed that. Um, if you have a tuple of two, then yeah, you are structure bindable with two. But if you are three, no, you are not structure bindable with two. And then I can actually use it in, in functions. Like for example, I can have a function saying, I, ex I expect a structure bindable with two. And then I can know that I can bind it into two. But if I change it to, I want structure bindable with three, then I have compilation error because we are not, or I need one. And the compilation error would be on, on the signature, not inside the function. I mean, I, and I can use it in order to differentiate between, between two functions. So I can have the same function, okay? Like two foos, one with structure bindable with one and another one with structure bindable with two. And you would go to the proper one. Of course, here I have to change that on, oh, you're for one. So let's use only one. And again, um, I'm relying here on different on, on uh, uh, concept, on different re requirements, different constraints. One, oh, I expect here a structure bindable with one. I expect here a structure bindable with two. Let's go back. Um, so uh, this is a reference to uh, the entire talk, I would say, because uh, usually what I do when something bothers me in C++, I go to see whether it was discussed already in Stack Overflow. And it was discussed in Stack Overflow. There is a question there. So I went to the question, and uh, this was the question. Can we do that? And it was not Veer asking it. And then um, I see that there is an answer already saying that, oh, you can do that, but not with C20, because with C20, you can do things like, oh, oh you are um, uh, a tuple like, you are CRA, but not for the struct case. If you want to cover also the struct case, oh, you have to go to circle uh, compiler and use something that is beyond C20. Well, this answer is written by me, um, as you may. You cannot do that in C20. Uh, this is a person I can count on, Bavi Gavzin, uh, very known in the ISA committee. And he says, well, you can do that for arrays, for type like, but not for struct. Yeah, I agree. Um, going back to the slides, this was a reference. Thank you, Bill, for um, contributing most of the ideas in this talk. Uh, and here I'm ready to take questions.